Oh, here, I'm on now. On now. Testing. So, um, my guitar mic is being weird. My pack is turning on, but there's no data. I'm going to get Bob set up if I can. And I'm going to get the desk mic 5 just in case we need it. Okay. The thing is, my guitar is not working right now. It's, it's turning on um, green, but not working. So, um, oh no, it's now it's working. Okay, great. Never mind. It just turned on now. There. No, everything is working now. I think it was my belt pack. No, it keeps going on as well. No, it's working now, so I'll give Bob number five. Okay, thank you so much, Mary. Shabbat shalom. We'll see you soon. Great, thank you so much. That's great. is working so we can be with our friends at home. That's right, Alex is being Barry's bun, uh, stunt double. <laughs> yeah. Look a little different. Making, making the noise, making the noise. <laughs> I like it. Oh. <laughs> Did you get new hearing aids? Maybe you should, um, no, my mom actually has hearing aids so she might know better. What? She <laughs> Do you have an app for your hearing aids or no? No. So I would, I would, uh, you know, check and trial and error, Vicky. <laughs> trial and error. Hopefully, just trial and success. <laughs> Bob says trouble. Do you just say trouble? That's what Bob says. <laughs> the treble boost. Right Hello, Shabbat Shalom. Hi, all together. Prayer books. Ooh, let's find some. Are they uh, maybe in the in the sanctuary? Let's uh, take a look here. How you doing? Oh, you know, good. It's Shabbat. Oh, I know the blue. I love it. I was like, is it possible I've never noticed this before? But it's actually.
Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Welcome, Shabbat Shira. In the midst of a great miracle, when Moses, when Miriam crossed the sea, he, she, they walked on land where the sea should be. And he, she, they took a stand where the sea once stood. Shabbat Shira. We offer our gratitude for the miracle of our redemption, our crossing over out of Mitzrayim and to the great beyonds. 126, beginning, centering, grounding ourselves on this Shabbat Shira in gratitude. Gratitude for all that is holy in my life. The source needs no words, no English or Hebrew, no semantics and no services. But I need them. We need them. Maybe you need them. Through prayer, I, we, can sense my, our inner strength, inner purpose, inner joy, our capacity to love. As we reach upward in prayer, we sense these qualities in our creator. To love the creator is to love each other. To work to make our lives better. To love God is to love the world God created and work to perfect it. To love God is to love dreams of peace and joy that illumine all of us and to bring that vision to life. 128. And I'll say, as we continue to mark this miracle, the miracle of our crossing and redemption, that there will be singing, there will be dancing, and there will be drumming. So get ready, look around, you'll see there's like a little spattering of drums. I saw you ready, you're ready to go. Just the time will come, but ready yourselves. Just connect with that heartbeat, inner rhythm, percussion that drives us as it's coming, getting ready to sing Seaside. Drawing ourselves close to the source, hearts open, 129 at the bottom of the page.
don't need my permission to make noise. You go ahead and turn it up. Get loud for Shabbat as we bring the lights, our lights, to Shabbats. Together with Jews across time and space, we light it up. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kichanu Svotal itzevanu lealigne shel shabbat. Light only ever grows in its giving to one another. We share this light of Shabbats and our prayer for. Shabbats with those who we know are not home for Shabbats, including prayers for family and friends who are missing or held hostage in Israel. Shiri Bibas, Yarden Bibas, Ariel Bibas, and baby Kafir Bibas. Beloved family of Maurice and Cindy Schneier. Also extending our light to Dror Or, whose wife Yonat Zikronal Racha was killed by Hamas. One forty. Shabbat is a love story between us and the Sabbath bride, soul, partner, friends, between us, you, me, and the divine, and Shabbat is the wedding. We sing to our beloved, page 138, verses 1, 2, 5, and 9, rising on the final verse, arms up, hearts open, welcoming our Sabbath soul. This 
now time for drumming. That's it. souls are complete, we, we welcome one another. Turning to the person next to you or someone you didn't come in with, welcoming them, wishing them a Shabbat Shalom, remembering that angels abound and you or they might be one of them. Shabbat Shalom. We welcome each other, we welcome our Shabbat angels, and we continue 144. 
Yit kada ve yit kada shme raba ve al madiv ra irute ve amlik malchute ve ha yehonu ve omechon uvchayedek ol bet Yisrael Tabak, it by Arvit Roman, the it not say, the it a dar, the it a lev, the it a lal, she made a good shabbery, the a lad, you call their hot the sheer hot to shpehatam Damiran ve alma Amen. Inviting you now to rise as you are able as we expand the presence of the presence and invite in the light of goodness on Shabbats and we bless. Nevarech 146. One forty nine, as we welcome the coming of the arrival, perhaps, of the darkness. Praise to you, Adonai, our source from whom the evening flows. Your wisdom sets the way on which time and season glide. Your breath guides the sails of the stars, creator of the tide of time and light. You guide the currents of day into night. As heaven spans to infinity, you set its course for eternity. Praise to you, Adonai, our source, from whom the evening flows. Baruch Adonai, Hama'arim Arabi. 151. With open hearts, whatever you do, whatever the question, wherever you are, do it with love.
Hearts open with the breath of life that we breathe, every cell of our being, we rise as we are able as we declare the oneness of the one. Page 152. Shema, Shema Yisrael, Yisrael. Ah. Adonai. get the timbrels. There was no time to let the bread rise. And yet the Torah teaches that on the other side of the sea, after our crossing out of Mitzrayim, that we sang and we danced and we drummed. And the women, Miriam led the women playing the timbrels. But where did they come from? What is the Torah teaching us here? this moment of redemption. You never know when it's going to be time to break into sleep. As we prepare for our liturgical reenactment of our crossing over of our redemption, I invite you to grab your drum or perhaps uh, to free your, your hands or your lap or your seat or something to make noise with 
we are going to get loud for Shabbat. The time has come for us to break it. 158. And the people dancing with their timbrels followed Miriam as she sang her song. Sing a song to the one whom we've exalted. Miriam and the people dance. All night long. There it is. Who is like you? We're building now. Adonai. Who is like take you all on parade. <laughs> We've crossed over, friends, through the parted waters and are now singing safely on the other sides. And we are overjoyed. And as it often is the case, us with human hearts, our joy is complicated by grief, by the suffering that we've endured in Mitzrayim, the suffering of slavery, and by what's happening behind us as the sea closes in on Pharaoh's chariots and the army that pursues us. Our joy is a complicated joy. We hold both the joy and the grief 161. 
uh, an awareness and a gratitude for all of the gifts, the gift of each breath, the gift of Shabbat, the gift of our togetherness. We are aware of a world in need of peace. And so we offer hearts open with all the joy we can hold, prayer, a yearning for peace. Hearts open, inviting you to rise as you are able, 164, as we enter prayer, as we become prayer. Continuing silently together through 180, once the prayers of your heart have been offered and heard, inviting you to find your seat.
of my mouth and the meditations of my hearts be acceptable. And may the one who makes peace make peace. 180, the bottom of the page. Oh, sir, shalom bim ramav shalom aleinu Shalom Aleinu Ve'alchol Yisrael 6.47 with words from this week's Torah portion set to song Ozi v'zimrat ya Adonai is my strength, my might, God is the source and will forever be the source of my salvation. The bottom of the page. i 
So when I sat down to gather my thoughts this week about this week's Torah portion and the miracle of our crossing over our redemption, I had thoughts to talk about the water and how it splits and how we walk to freedom on dry land. I had thought to talk about Nakshon and his courageous first steps into the deep in the act of great faith and what that teaches us. I had thought to talk about Moses and how he sings to the people and how that's one model of leadership. I had thought to talk about Miriam who responds to the people in song and how that's perhaps a softer model of leadership. This is always the question, you see, when it comes to teaching Torah. Revelation is ongoing and there's so much to say. And then I woke this morning to global news headlines reporting on the International Court of Justice's preliminary response to allegations of genocide brought by South Africa against the state of Israel for its military operations in Gaza and the ICJ's determination that Israel must, in accordance with its obligations as a signatory to the United Nations Genocide Convention, take measures to prevent the commission of genocides, which the ICJ defines as acts committed with the intent to destroy in whole or in part a nation, an ethnicity, a racial or ethnic or religious group as such. I woke this morning to news that the ICJ had declared that Israel must take measures to prevent and to punish the incitement of genocide in Gaza and that Israel take immediate and effective measures to address the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. I wanted to talk about the poetry of Shariat Hayam and how that poem is, is laid out structurally, brick by brick, in our Sefer Torah. You'll see it, you'll come tomorrow morning, we'll open it, and you'll see our path is guided with script and scripture. But I woke this morning to global news headlines accusing Israel of genocide. It's devastating, of course, deeply confusing, disorienting, that Israel, a nation formed in the painful aftermath of genocide, should be and should stand accused as such. It's dissonance. It challenges our sense of who we are as Jews, as the people Israel. How can it be that we are accused of genocide? And I was so mad. I wanted to sing. We sang. I wanted to drum. I wanted to make noise. I wanted to celebrate. And there's so much to celebrate. But we meet the moments. That's our work. And the more I sat with this news, this accusation, this ruling, and this confusion, the more I realized that there's little in the court's ruling that I take issue with. Hear me out. There are those who will argue, and who have argued, that South Africa's allegations against Israel are more political than principled. And they ought to be read alongside South Africa's silence and failure to subject other violent nation states or state actors to scrutiny. South Africa was silenced in the case of Rwanda, silence in Kosovo and Bosnia and Darfur and Myanmar, and Ukraine. Others will say that South Africa has otherwise failed to discharge its obligation as a signatory to the Genocide Convention to bring those responsible to account and it's a fair point. Why should Israel be singled out for scrutiny? But it's a distraction. 
the motivation for asking the question should have no bearing on the answer. Sure, it would be nice if there was a more even-handed um, orientation to what's happening in the world, that every occasion of injustice or violence was given the same time and attention and scrutiny, and that we are continually held account, held to account and held to our highest moral principles. That's not the world we live in, but it would be nice. No matter the motivation for asking whether it's less than even-handed or outright anti-Semitic has little bearing on the answer. It is precisely the International Court of Justice's job to ask the question, to ask whether a government's actions amount to genocide. That's their job. That's what they've been commissioned to do. That's the standard that they're holding for us. And it's on us to ensure that the answer is always emphatically and undeniably no. Or do, since when do we shy away from asking questions? We don't fear the question, only the truth of the answer. No matter the answer, and truth will win out, the question does challenge us, stings us a little, rubs us the wrong way. How can it be that you're talking about us, our people, Israel? How can they stand accused of such atrocities? It hurts. But we don't shy away from the question. It's a fundamental condition of our Jewishness that we ask questions and we seek the truth of the answer, whether we're reading the Torah or the New York Times or the ICJ reports. We understand as close readers that words create worlds. And if we're not careful, and sometimes even when we are careful, that words can destroy worlds as well. And so it matters to us that this word, this charge, genocide, is leveled against us. But I see here an opportunity, a painful opportunity, but an opportunity nonetheless, because embedded in the question and the scrutiny is the opportunity to hold ourselves high and to the highest moral standard beyond the stipulations that are encoded in the convention and not just the Genocide Convention, but the Geneva Convention and the Rome Statute and the uh, responsibility to protect and the will to intervene and all of the legislation that is meant to hold us to these standards. Embedded in the question is the opportunity for us to rise and hold and meet the standards to always emphatically and undeniably answer no. For it's not just the Genocide Convention and the Geneva Convention or any other legal, political, international statute that we are bound to and by. Our moral standards are rooted in and defined by Torah and by the covenants of Torah between us and the divine. And our work, our high moral standards and the work of achieving it is dictated by Torah. The answer should always be emphatically, undeniably no. Not according to a political standard or a legal standard, according to the standard of justice that the Torah promises and that helps to bring about the world of justice that Torah imagines. To be clear, the International Court of Justice hasn't yet adjudicated Israel's actions in Gaza, haven't yet weighed in as a matter of innocence and guilt, and the ruling, which I read closely this morning, is actually more a reminder than a rebuke. It doesn't say one way or another if what has happened in Gaza or in Israel is genocide or not. As close readers, as a close reader, I will say 
that what the ICJ report says is not whether genocide has happened, is happening, is currently happened, or it's currently happening, or how to prevent it. It simply says, don't do it. That's the first, that's the first ruling. Israel should not commit genocide. <laughs> Seems pretty on the nose, right? Israel is a party to the Genocide Convention. Israel has already committed, has already made this promise to not commit genocide. This is not a you did this and don't do it again. It just says, number one, don't commit genocide. And even though we like, can't define genocide, we don't know when it's happening or if it's happening or if it's happened, we can all agree that genocide is bad, right? <laughs> That's something we can agree on. That's the first point. Don't do it. Also, don't incite other people to do it. This is the second ruling. It doesn't say Israel did or didn't, just says don't do it. Don't incite others to act with genocidal intents. I'm not interested in offering apologies for anyone on any side, either side, all the sides for Israel's actions or operations in Gaza, and I'm not even sure that I could. But I think we can all agree that Israel should refrain from committing genocide and from inciting others to commit genocide. We agree? Yes. yes. This is what the, the, the ICJ is saying. Don't do this and don't do that. This thing you already said you wouldn't do. So why? why? Why the global news headlines? Why they protest the rallies, the outrage, the outright dismissal? Because this accusation leveled against us, this word, this one word, hurts it hurts our sense of identity and morality. It's also inaccurate. There's been no adjudication. In fact, it's not even been defined. Not in a way that's ever been operationalized legally. To this day, not one genocidal regime has successfully been brought to justice or held to account according to the United Nations Genocide Convention. Not one, not in Rwanda or Cambodia or Kosovo or Bosnia or Ukraine or Srebrenica. Never one time. Oi, oi, exactly, oi. Also, this is not a, a body that has uh, the, um, a, a, a means of, of operationalizing the, um, the ruling. There's no enforcement mechanism. There's no teeth to it. It's equivalent to an international political shaming. And shame, yeah, shame. Don't kill people and don't incite other people to kill people. And if you do that, shame on you. It doesn't work other than for us to turn inward and ask the question and to do the work of understanding what's happening in the world, to take note of the injustice and to help bring about the world we all wish to see. It's also inaccurate for another reason. The incitement to genocide And the evidence used to promote this ruling was drawn from statements made by Prime Minister Netanyahu. Statements about Amalekh and how Amalekh and the Amalekites should be forgotten. Not just forgotten, but we should remember to forget them. Also, though the Torah is not linear, later, and for Samuel should be annihilated. But that's not what Netanyahu said. He said they should be forgotten or not remembered. And those words come from this week's Torah portion. Amalek, the memory should be eradicated. There should be no memory of Amalek. 
Netanyahu wasn't referring to 1 Samuel when Saul kills the Amalekites, but to the idea that we should remember to forget those who hurt us, who attack us. It's dangerous, of course. We should be more careful with our words. But it is a bit of a leap, a conceptual leap from you should forget or remember to forget what the uh, Amalekites did to you and incitements to genocide. Again, there are no apologies here, just precision. That's what we do. We are close readers of Torah. We should all mind our mouths, more so if given a political platform. But as a matter of precision, it's simply not what was said. And even if it were, Amalek is no more. The Amalekites are no more. Amalek, the Amalekites are now just a metaphor. They have been eradicated. And the mitzvah, and it's conceived of as a mitzvah to forget, to remember to forget the Amalekites and to destroy them, has been supplanted by teachings of the rabbis in the oral Torah that says, no, 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 we've done, we're done with that. They are no more. This, this, this injunction no longer stands. You are free of your obligation. It's metaphorical. It doesn't translate into warfare. There's no physical people on the other side of this equation. We talk about Haman being a descendant of Amalek, Purim, right? We celebrate the, um, the hanging of Haman and goodbye. It's a metaphor. Amalek, Haman. Sadly, Hamas is not a metaphor. It is a really real threat. And those in power have been less than careful with their words. But it's hardly a call to genocide. It is nevertheless an opportunity for us, a reminder for us to be careful with our words. There is a third point, a third ruling from the ICJ. And this to my mind is the most important. There is a humanitarian crisis in Gaza. People are suffering, children are dying. And it is on us to be a voice of justice for them and for this world. That is what Torah teaches. That's what Torah demands. It's what the ICJ demands without adjudication. And this is a message not just for us, but for everyone. I think we can all agree, genocide is bad. Inciting genocide is bad. Killing babies is bad. We agree. This is common ground. So I woke up this morning to international headlines accusing Israel of genocide, and I read the report, I'm like, wait, here's an opportunity for us to rise, to hold ourselves to account, to hold Israel to account, to hold everyone on all sides to account, to be a model of justice in the world, not of reactivity and uh, violence, of despair. Yeah, look at us. Ask us the question, because the answer should always be, Emphatically, no. So it's an invitation, this ruling. The world is watching, and you know, the ICJ will continue its investigation into the uh, situation. And we may think it's biased, anti-Semitic, unfair, but we have the world's attention. And in that is an opportunity to ensure that the answer is always emphatically and undeniably no. This is not genocide. This is not war crimes. There's suffering, but it's something else. People are suffering, and it's on us to meet the moments with compassion and understanding, a close reading, and the work. Shabbat shalom.
By the way, we're not winning, right? Well, no matter what you call it. And still, we sing. Six seventy seven with a prayer for healing in a world that is full of so much suffering. Prayers for healing. Toddle Belly, Amelia Byers, Audrey Cohen, David Eisenstadt, Ariana Hagakor, Ron Hall, Michelle Kahn, Mary Jane Klein, Catherine Corner, Jack Lyons, Jane Meyerson, Estelle Nadler, Merle Perlmutter, Marilyn Rosen, Slim Shortly, Rabbi Sam Skolnick, Jennifer Sumber, Tali Tolman Maneo, Ben Wilder, Karen Wilder, Kim Wiltsey, Maureen Wolfson, Jen Wolfson. Inviting prayers for those who are holding your heart for healing. for safety and healing for all those who continue to be held captive who are suffering who feel afraid who are alone who don't know if they'll ever make it home
word genocide doesn't define us. The ICJ doesn't define us. The court of public opinion doesn't define us. Our actions, our intentions, our willingness to work defines us. We say who we are. We show who we are. And we pray that the world sees it. It's on us, rising as you are able, 587. Halenu lishabe al la adon hakol la teik gedula al yotzeh breishit shehu sam chelkenu leached et shemo vegor alenu leam lech malchuto v'anachnu korim u'mishakavim u'modim lifne mele. Malchei Hamakim Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Five ninety-one. V'nemor Adonai Lamelech Al Kol Haaretz Bayom Ahu Bayom Ahu Yeh Adonai. There's so much happening, which I would love to tell you about once I find the announcements. Here we are. Tomorrow morning, Shakari, morning minion, 10 a.m. Sunday, Jewish Learning Adventure, 9.30 to 11.30. Weekly learning, Tuesday morning meditation, Torah study, trope on Wednesday, conversational Hebrew. Coffee high with the rabbi resumes next week. Check the websites. See how I like look with a question and Alex knows all the answers. <laughs> First Friday storytelling. Ooh, next Friday, February 2nd, Kabbalah Shabbat begins at 6, includes a family style story for all ages. What fun. Spring learning series, come learn with Rabbi. A last hurrah, it says here in parentheses. So show up all the things you wanted to know about your Judaism but never had the opportunity to ask. Wow, that's an invitation. Adults, adults, doesn't say only this in person only adult learning series that's very confusing only adults or adults only open to all come for one in the series come for all in the series check the websites have you ever wondered about who wears to fill in well february 8th come find out jla presents the second annual holla bake sherry you want to holler something about that Eighteen dollars in. <laughs> Thirty-six dollars in. <laughs> it says it'll be a pizza lunch. Will it be challah pizza or just? One can dream. <laughs> Challah pizza is part of what defines me. So. <laughs> All of the dates, times, locations, information is on the websites. How to help Israel? A question we continue to ask, and our Tikkun Alam committee continues to ask. Israel needs our support, your supports. Uh, you can check the website for various organizations that have been vetted by the Tikkun Alam committee 
and we'll gratefully receive your generous donations. Looking to get involved? Wonderful, we're happy to have you. Join a committee. Join a committee, or maybe consider joining a committee. Hey, I think you should consider a committee? a committee is a good idea. A committee, there are so many committees you could join. There are committees to join. <laughs> that's it that's it that's it these these programs are all complementary not uh... oh there we go we should have like a committee throwdown just... okay poetry slam that's it join a committee join a havara come to services we need you we do this together. This is a, a, a covenant that we're in, a breach that we have. And every one of us is a letter in the Torah. Anyone have any good news they want to share? Joy has some joy to share. Yes, last uh, January 23rd was Alyssa and my 25th. <gasps> yeah. Woo! Oh. Okay, I'm just going to hop on there and say also that January 23rd was Frankie's 13th birthday. Teenager. Mazel Mazel. Teenager. I, Spicious oh. date. Yeah. Yeah. It's Bob's birthday. Yom Kuled et Sameach. Yom Kuled et Sameach. Yom Kuled et Sameach. Yom Kuled et Sameach. Also, um, our Cantor Emeritus Bob Cohen's birthday yesterday. So on my Ooh. calendar, I have Cantor Bob Cohen. I have Bob Helfand. It's a great week for birthdays in my calendar. The birthday of the Bobs. I love it. Happy Other birthday. good news to share. There are so many reasons to despair, friends. Just turn on the news. Uh, Doc had a surgery. He's doing well. He's getting better. He's almost three weeks. He's drunk and he's happy. And he Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. Yeah, that is good news. Every moment is an opportunity to rejoice. We take it where we can, friends. So as always, our joy is a complicated joy, complicated by grief. Pausing in this moment as we do in every service to mourn and to remember. If you are in a period of mourning, or remembering, we mourn and remember with you. Turning to page 594. It's a fearful thing to love what death can touch. A fearful thing to love, hope, dream, to be. To be and owe oh, to lose. A thing for fools, this and a holy thing, a holy thing to love. For your life has lived in me, your laugh once lifted me, your word was gift to me. To remember this brings a painful joy. It is a human thing, love, a holy thing to love what death has touched. If you are in a period of mourning, Shiva, seven days of mourning. Shoshim, 30 days of mourning. Shana, a year of mourning. We invite you to stand, to share aloud the name of the one you're mourning and remembering. So it's been six months today. Wow. Six months. My father. Yitzhak ben Alexander Vazimbel. Also marking the recent loss of members of this congregation, Lou Klein, remembered by Mary Jane Klein and family and everyone here at CEHV. Kayla Feldman, remembered by the Feldman and Lagochi families. We mourn 
and we remembering, holding also the memory of those who have died this time in years past, marking the yard sites of Sidney Engel, Dr. Jacques Grimblat, Mark Grimblat's father, Samuel Kaplan, Elaine Karasik, Russell Karasik's mother, Herbert Kletsky, Joseph Lestrange, Carmel Gold's father, Sam N. Mann, Martha Marks, Molly Miller, Amelia Rodner, Anna Solomon, Georgie Starr, Valerie Mittenberg's mother, Max Stern, Leon Tepper, Barbara Levy's father, Marius Wiener, Paula Galley's father, Morris Wiener, Rosa Wolf. Adding to the list of names, the memory of those who are not named and for whom there is no one left to say Kaddish. So the martyrs of our people and those of every race and nation whose life was a gift to humanity and whose loss we mourn. Rising together, standing as one, 598. Yit gadal vayit gadash shemei rabba ve'alma divra kirute ve'amlich malchute v'chayi hon v'yom echon v'chayi dekor v'et Yisrael ba'agala v'zman karib imru amen yehi shemei rabba mevarach ve'olam ulmei umaya yit barach v'yish tavak v'yit ba'ar v'yit romam v'yit nasei Vit Hadar, Vit Alev, Vit Halal, Shmeid Kurisha, Brihu, Aela, Minko, Birchata, Vishirata, Tushpechata, Venechemata, Da Amiran, Belma, Bimru, Amen, E Shlama, Rabba, Min Shemaya, Bechaim, Alenu, Yako, Yisrael, Bimru, Amen, O Se Shalom, Bimramav, Uya Se Shalom. Aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael, ve'al kol b'nei Adam, ve'imru. Amen. It is Shabbat Shira, Shabbat of song. And there's so, so, so much to celebrate. Our song is our prayer. So we sing a new song, 643. Shira, Shira, Alleluia, Shira, Alleluia. Hava, Hava, Na Shira, Shira, Alleluia, Shira, Alleluia. Hava, Hava, Na Shira, Shira. Yeah. 
There's so much to celebrate and so much joy to share. And there's Hala. We sanctify this day, page 122. Sort of a test. Let's <laughs> see, 122. Oh. Mai ere, mai voker, yo ma shi shi hi, mai ulu, hashamayim ha'aretz v'chol zeva'am, v'yachal Elohim, v'yom ha'shvi'i, malakto asher asa, v'yishbok v'yom ha'shvi'i, mikom malakto asher asa, Vayavarek Elohim et Yom Hashvi'i Vayakadesh Oto Ki Bo Shavat Mikom Hakto Asher Bara Elohim Lasot Sabri Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Bore Bore Amen. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Gitshanu B'mitzvotav V'ratzavanu V'shabbat Kodsho Be'ahava U'v'ratzon Hinhilanu Zikaron L'ma'asei V'reishit Ki Huyom Tehila L'mikra'e Kodesh Zeker l'tziyat mi-Yitzrayim Kivanu v'arta ve'otanu k'idasha Inkoamim ha'v'shabat kodshecha Be'ava u'v'ratzon hinhaltanu Baruch Ata Adonai Mikadesh HaShavat Amen Hamotzi Lehem in Haaretz We give thanks to the one above Our voices rise in song together as our joyful prayer is said, Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Amotzi Lehem Min Haaretz. Amen. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Woo. We're going to break this bread. Come grab a piece. So great to welcome the Shabbat together. Yeah. I'd like to thank everybody who led tonight. It was a wild service. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> See, we're, on, we're on the road now, folks. We are, we've, thank you. We're on our way into the wilderness. <laughs> 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 <laughs>